Hi there, and welcome to another lesson for today. And I'd like to talk about the three easy strategies to file paper-based documents presented to you by Scribe Notes Business Support Services. I am Mimi, and I'm going to be with you for the next uh, few minutes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So we talk about the overview of filing, specifically the what and the whys of filing. So just to give you a brief overview, filing is the process of organizing documents into a meaningful order. And you will appreciate that filing is important because it gives you quick and easy access to your records. It can help you get rid of information you no longer need. It can help you put all information into one common and secure place. And it can help you find information quickly. There are two types of filing, specifically files, sorry, the paper-based versus the electronic files. But today we'll just talk about paper-based files. We'll discuss electronic filing in another lesson. The types of paper-based files, well, depends on the types of documents you have. So I usually classify them into two types. First is your working documents, which are documents for temporarily, um, you know, storing them temporarily for present or future use. And then your written records, which are your documents that have already been used and served its purpose. So you're not certain that you will use it again in the future. So keeping that in mind, let's start with your working documents. So I am going to tell you three strategies that I've also done to organize them or file them away. First is by date. So when you do by date, I recommend you either do daily, weekly, or monthly. When you say daily, you have files uh, like suspension files or boxes or it, or a tray, for example, that you organize by date. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and probably you won't have a Saturday or a Sunday unless you also work on those days. Or if that is too um, detailed for you, you can also do week one, week two, week three, week four, signifying the four weeks of the month. But for me, I've used also a monthly system where I arrange my suspension files um, in the filing cabinet um, from 1 to 31. So I have a folder for each number from 1 to 31 to represent each day of the month. And then for the future, like uh, for the next month or next three months, I have categorized per month, January, February, March. At the moment, it feels um, a little bit overwhelming or you might get confused. But once you start choosing um, any one of these strategies, then it will make sense to you. But to me, there is no right or wrong choice. The choice really depends on the frequency of use of the documents or the volume of work to be done. The important thing is you make a decision of how frequently you use these documents and the dates here will give you an indication of whether you need to do it daily, weekly, or monthly. The second means or way of filing would be by order of priority. So what I do to organize my paperwork is to decide if those working documents are my now document, that, that means I need to attend to them straight away, or later if I may be able to do that late into the day or maybe tomorrow, for example, future, which means any task paperwork that will be used at later date. So I don't have to use it now, I could file it and put it in a place where I can refer back to it late at a later date. So the other variation to this is if you don't want to do the now, later, future method, you can also do it per task. So you have a folder or a box where you put everything about meetings, which you will look into later on, or anything that has to do with um, numbers, finance, for example, or anything that has to do with computation, you put them all together. If it's a research uh, material, for example, you also put them together. So you have a variety of ways to manage your paperwork. The third available method, which I want, want to share to you today, is what I term as recurring versus one-off. So you have to decide, is this a recurring document? Will this be something that I will use again and again and again? Or is this document going to be used once? <clears throat> Sorry. And if this document is only going to be used once, then that means I probably need to um, store it somewhere, but I'm not sure whether I will be chucking it out completely or throwing it away. So 
and put them together in one place. So your workflow dictates where to put the files. Sometimes checklists assist in determining how to handle certain documents. I do also have a checklist. So in my checklist, I have a column <coughs> where I put all the different kinds of documents that I have. And on the right column, I tick whether it's a one-off or a recurring document. So when I do filing in the next week, for example, it'll be easy for me to remember what those documents are and whether I would be using them in the future or not. Now, we've done filing and organizing your working documents. So these are the documents, as I've said, that you might be referring to at a later point in time. Now, for written records, uh, which are documents that you may not need anymore or may need sometime in the future, but you don't want to throw it away, one simple way of organizing them would be some sort of alphabetical or ordering sequencing, okay, uh, some sort of sequencing. So you can alphabetically arrange them by topic or by surname or by name, depending on whether you deal with a lot of people, for example, in your business or by using a number sequence. So usually if you're in a hospital, the patient records are organized by name or surname or by number sequence, like, like D001. So maybe your last name is the letter D and 001, you're the first patient with that last name D, something like that. All right. So if this makes sense, go ahead and do it. If not, some people prefer to use color coding. What do you do when you color code? You assign specific colors that mean something to you and your team and to keep it consistent for color coding other materials at work and even for your e-copies. How do you do that? For example, I have a red folder and my manager knows that the red folder is for anything that he needs to sign or read straight away. Then I have a purple folder from my manager and the purple folder in it, he knows that those are his reading materials that he can read in the plane at night, review for the next day's meeting, something like that. So when I color code his filing, okay, he would also know that anything for me to uh, file as a written record goes to a purple folder and a box with everything that he has already signed that I need to put away or need to send somewhere and keep a copy of also belongs to a red folder. So it's up to you how you and your team would like to decide on what colors to use and what it means for the team. The third type of method to file or organize your written record is by type of document. And I guess naturally we would think about workflow again. So are you filing teaching materials? So put all teaching materials together. Are you filing invoices? Put all invoices together. Are they all receipts, receipts that you don't really need to look into but can't throw away? Are they minutes of the meeting? Are they medical records? Are they documents per committee? So you sort it out, you put them in categories and you file according to those categories. And then once you've got your category, you can even go further to say committee 2001, committee 2002, committee 2003. So that's per date or per year or per month. Or teaching materials for January teaching materials for February, teaching materials for March. So things like that will help you decide which courses are offered on which month. So it's easy for you to refer to those written records when you need it. Now, what are my other tips for this? Which files go where? <laughs> so um, in terms of sorting, I would be recommending that most used documents or files be put on the top of the filing cabinet. So on the first one or two cabinets on top, and the least used ones can be filed at the bottom. So your working documents can be on the top of the filing cabinet and your written documents that you may not need to look into in the near future will be filed at the bottom. And the same principle applies to bookcases or bookshelves. So make the middle or the top rows um, space for the most used files and the least used files can be put at the bottom or at the far end. So why is this the recommended method? For health and safety reasons, the more you file written records or documents that you don't really use, they tend to be the um, the bulk of the filing that you do. So they, the paperwork will obviously be heavy. So putting it at the bottom of the filing cabinet stabilizes the cabinet. So the weight is at the bottom. And obviously it's um, going to help you as well in terms of bending, okay, or stretching 
because you don't need to bend too much when you refer to the files. But the more level your um, arms are or your body is to the filing cabinet that you are um, trying to look for or stretching is not too difficult. So what I'm saying is um, it's also good for you not to bend too much or stretch too much if the filing most used filing cabinet is, for example, eye level or at least the most convenient um, for you to reach out. Okay, so um, that's that. Let's try an exercise for now. So what I want you to do is help me classify the following documents here as either working documents or written records. And number two, suggest a possible way of organizing it for filing. So I've got here birth certificate, important receipts, insurance policies, medical records, minutes of the meeting, service contracts, agenda papers and reports, files, brochures, notes for typing, lecture materials and handouts. So let's just pick two. Um, I'll probably choose notes for typing. Okay, so how do we classify this? Is it a working document or a written record? So there are two ways of deciding it. When I say notes for typing, that means it hasn't been typed. And this assumes that the manager may need you to show it to him or her once it's typed. So it's a working document for me because it's something that you need to do. But if you can't do it straight away, you have to put it on a certain file place or box tray or whatever um, to refer back to at a later time. Now, once you classify that that's a working document, what do you do? How do you organize it for filing? You probably will use um, a suggestion would be a now, later, and future filing system, okay, or per task. Let's try another one. Birth certificates. Is it a working document or a written record? Well, birth certificate would probably be a written record because once it's already been prepared, it's already a done deal. <laughs> There's not much you can change in terms of what's in the birth certificate. So all you need to do is put it, put it away, file it away for future use. So when might you need this? For example, when you um, want to apply for, I don't know, um, a, a license and you need identity, or applying for a passport and you need an identity. So birth certificate is an identity document. It's not a working document. So you file it under written records. And how do you file it? So if it's a family filing, for example, birth certificates all belong to one folder, family birth certificates or family records or personal records. So if it's an individual based thing, um, you can also do it that way. Now let's try another one, service contracts. Would this be a working document or a written record? Mm, it's a little bit tricky here because, for example, if a service contract is a, a draft in progress and it hasn't been finalized, then obviously you would need input from people to refer to it, version 1, version 2, version 3, and you need to keep all the versions together until they give you a final version, signed it off, and ready to file after you have distributed it to everyone. But it becomes a written record once there are no changes to be done and it just has to be kept as part of the business uh, practice. So again, your workflow will dictate whether a piece of paper is a working document or a written record. Now it's time for us to do a little bit of reflection and application. So based on everything we've learned so far about filing, the different methods, deciding whether it's a written document or a written record, think about what documents document your files. Are they working documents or written records? How are they currently handled or organized? Is there a filing system in place? And what strategies can you use based on the suggestions discussed to improve your current system? Have you been doing something that isn't working at all? And if that is the case, please review your current filing system and discuss this with your manager, colleague, or admin. Decide on areas for improvement. Find out if you have a company or organization policy on records management. Is your filing system compliant to that policy? Are you doing it the wrong way? Are you trying to reinvent the wheel? If there's no policy, should you, should you adapt or create one? Just so if, for example, you are away and somebody has to do your filing, they would have a certain document to refer to to be consistent with whatever it is that you're currently doing. So I guess even if some of you are not keen on doing filing, at one point in the future, it has to be done. It is good to be able to come up with a system 
to be able to do it most effectively for you, your team, or even at home. If you require more help, don't hesitate to talk to your human resources team as they may have some resources or materials to share on how to implement a good system for you in terms of filing, or they may even refer you to some training on organizing. If you get stuck, you're still stuck, and you need a little bit of help and you need more clarification about the lesson for today, don't hesitate to contact me at scribenotes101 at gmail.com or connect with me via my Facebook, Scribe Notes Biz Support. This is Mimi again saying thank you, have a great day, and happy filing.